Okay guys, so I'm finally able to get out to test the new 2021 Scorpion DC. And I wanna let you guys see what this thing looks like in the sunlight. The silver is actually pretty bright. Not quite, you know, 2016 Metanium MGL bright, but it's pretty, uh, pretty shimmering out here, especially with the little flecks of color they have in there. I see green, red, silver. But yeah, this is what the new reel looks like in the sunlight. And it looks even better than it does inside or indoors. Now I have the reel mounted on the six foot eight Shimano Bantam medium power. And uh, I got 10 pound mono. And what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna cast around and test out the different line modes and see if they're just as good as the old reel. And then we're gonna check out the, I guess the lure range or the lure casting range of this reel, see how low it can go. And then in part two of the video or videos, we're gonna do a casting comparison versus the 2017 Scorpion DC. Okay, so the first lure we're gonna throw is gonna be like a half ounce topwater spook type bait from Hedden. It's the Spook Junior, I guess, is what it says. And we're gonna set the spool tension first. And we're gonna set it to just minimize the side to side play, which is what I recommend for all DC reels, probably with the exception of the ones with IDC4. Now, interestingly enough, Shimano gave instructions on how to set the spool tension. It was in Japanese, of course, but according to a Japanese viewer who was watching my SLX DC JDM version video, he said that the instructions say to adjust it as needed. So yeah, take that into consideration. And I'm going to, I guess, pick my line mode. And since we're using mono, I'm going to pick the mono mode first. So that is the, the middle mode or N for nylon. And one thing I want to say is that the Japanese YouTubers that have already made videos on this reel, when I was watching them cast it, the reel made, I guess like a, a loud sound in addition to the DC noise or the DC song, almost as if the bearings were bad or something. And it wasn't just one YouTuber that, uh, had this uh, sound coming from their reel. It was like two or three at least. So I'm gonna see if my reel has that as well. All right, so we're going to start off with the number four mode and uh, let's start casting. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of little sidearm casts to let the line settle. And that was a pretty decent uh, cast for uh, just flicking it out there. Went out farther than I thought it would. Now keep in mind the number four mode is supposed to be for your lightest lures or your lighter lures, something like down to a quarter of an ounce. So there's gonna be a lot of breaking involved. And I'm not sure how all this debris got in here. All right, one more little line settling cast. All right, so that little overhead flick probably went out about 30 yards. And I think the line is good and settled. Of course, these are DC brakes. So it shouldn't have been a problem in the first place, but let's start doing some casting. Okay, so as to be expected, spool is perfectly controlled. Haven't really heard any kind of extra noises like I did with the Japanese YouTuber reels. All right, let's do a couple more casts. So that's going out there at least 30 yards. And I really can't put a really full swing into it because I have these rocks at an angle behind me and I don't want to hit the rocks on my backstroke. All right, let's do one more in the number four mode. Okay, so it's consistently going probably at least 30 yards. But so far, no extra noises coming from the reel other than the DC sound, which is good. All right, let's go down to number three. All 
All right, so that went probably at least five yards farther. I don't know why I'm trying to fish. I need to burn this in <laughs> so I can make this video for you guys. I keep trying to work this top water lure. All right, a couple more on number three. All right, so hopefully you guys can see where that's landing. We've got a nice calm surface here and some dark tree reflections on the water. So you guys should be able to see where these casts are landing. All right, one more in the number three setting. Okay, so not bad for the number three setting. Not bad at all, probably hitting close to 40 yards if not 40 at least. All right, so we're gonna turn the brakes down to number two. Damn, that was a long cast. Probably approaching 45 yards. Yeah, I think I can even get more out. Okay, so let's go down to number two. And this should give us some pretty, pretty long casts. Hopefully. All right, not bad. Probably a little farther than number three. I'm gonna put a really good swing into this next cast, see if we can get it out there. Hitting about the same spot as the last cast. Oh, there's some activity out there right next to me. I'm gonna see if I can catch something. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can catch something with top water since there appears to be some fish feeding back here. All right. Can I coax the bass? Nope. Well, there's some activity right there. Nope, I guess this spook is too big. Okay, back to number two in mono mode. Here we go, one more cast. Okay, that one was kind of short because the lure came out the rod wrong and I could see it tumbling through the air like a helicopter blade. So we're gonna do one more in number two. See if I can get a nice long cast where the Lure flies through the air like a bullet. All right, so it's probably consistently hitting close to 50 yards. Now with a, I guess, heavier powered rod, I think I could put a little bit more effort and get some more distance. But yeah, so far number two, as expected, is the farthest casting brake setting yet. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to number one. Now this is supposed to be for super heavy lures. I think three quarters of an ounce and up that are really aerodynamic. So we may see a blow up and let's try it out. Ooh. Yeah, even this half ounce spook was not heavy enough to engage or use the number one brake setting. And if I didn't stop that cast short, with my thumb, this blow up would have been really, really, really bad. Damn, they are feeding over there and I'm here shooting a video for you guys. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to engage the wind mode and there's not a lot of wind going on right now, but there is a little bit coming into me. I'm sure you guys can see the ripple on the water, but we're gonna cast right into this wind Okay. 
damn that went out there farther than i thought and the spool was perfect perfectly controlled let's do another cast it's going out there probably like 30 yards in wind mode yep i'm in wind mode so i guess my question is what's the difference between wind mode and the number four mode because they look to be about the same in casting distance so let me do a couple of casts with wind mode and then we're going to flip it over to the number four mode see if we can see a difference so that's wind mode that's going out there quite a bit now as expected the retrieve is buttery smooth okay one more on wind mode okay so let's go to number four mode All right, so it looks like number four mode on that cast casted a little bit farther, probably like between five to eight feet. All right, let's do one more in brake setting number four. Okay, so I guess the brake settings are linear where wind mode is probably gonna be your strongest brake setting. And number four is going to be the second strongest. So yeah, they could have basically just used number five instead of the W. Okay, so now we're going to change the line mode to, let's go to braid mode. Okay, so we're in braid mode and the brake setting is on number four. Now, in my opinion, the braid mode should be the longest casting mode and it looks about the same as the monofilament mode right there spool was perfect as to be expected all right let's do one more cast okay so i saw i guess one or two loops probably due to my uh awkward release on that cast but the lure still went out there okay let's go down to number three Damn, that went out there. Spool was perfect. That's probably going out there at least 45 yards on number three. Okay, one more cast on number three. Okay, had a couple of loops there. Hopefully you guys saw that sorted itself out. Cast probably didn't go quite as far as the first cast, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to number two. And number two is the lowest I could go in monofilament mode. Let's see if it can do it in braid mode. Oh shit. Okay, so as you can see there, number two in braid mode, we had some noticeable overrun that sorted itself out because the cast was really, really long and the DC brakes did their thing. But yeah, in braid mode, obviously the number two setting is less braked than in mono mode. All right, we'll do one more, see if we can get a cast without an overrun. Holy shit, that was a pretty good overrun there. And luckily the brakes sorted it out before the lure hit the water. So DC brakes doing their thing. So obviously number one on the braid mode is gonna be virtually impossible to do without exploding the spool. But I'm gonna try just a little lob cast in the number one mode and uh, see what happens. Just, a, just an easy sidearm cast. Yep, I'm on number one. And that was fine. I didn't see anything, but I'm sure if I put some effort into it it's gonna blow the spool up so i'm gonna try that out oh yeah i had to really stop that one short or it would have probably ended this video and that really burned my thumb up stopping that cast but yeah number one 
setting in both braid and mono mode is a no-go, at least for this lure right here. Okay, so time to go to the fluorocarbon mode, which should be the strongest brake mode or line mode, I should say, for this reel or pretty much all DC reels. All right, so I gotta take my thumb and kind of just move that indicator arrow over and there we go. All right guys, so number four on fluorocarbon mode should be pretty short compared to the others. Oh yeah, that was way short. I could feel the brakes immediately choking that cast off. And yeah, you're looking at uh, probably a good 20 to 25 feet short of number four on the other line modes. Okay, so that went out there a little bit better, but still gonna be short, and I caught a stick. Okay, let's try to squeeze a nice long cast out of the number four setting. Nope, the distance is pretty consistent, probably right around 30 yards, maybe a little less, but probably at least a good 10 foot shorter than the other line modes. Okay, so let's go down in number two, number three. Okay, that was good distance, but I don't know, it's almost about the same as the other line modes. It's hard to judge, but one thing I can tell you is just feeling in hand, the spool does not spin as fast or it doesn't feel like it's spinning as fast as in the other two line modes. Okay, a couple more casts on number three. All right, that was pretty good. Okay, so as you can see, spool is pretty much damn near perfect, just like the old Scorpion DC. Doesn't matter what line mode you put it in, what line you use, you can cast pretty much anything without having to worry about overruns, which was something that the Corrado DC and the SLX DC had problems with in my experience. So let's go down to number two. Okay, so it didn't look too different than the number three mode, but that was kind of a bad cast on my part. I keep catching these damn sticks. All right, let me try to get a good, nice long cast. Okay, so that is definitely shorter than the other two. Now you guys probably can't see, but there's like a ring or a line of debris out there that I was hitting with the other two line modes that I'm falling well short of in fluorocarbon mode. All right, one more cast. Got a little bit of a wind behind me. Okay, nope, still well short of that ring of debris. So between number two and number three, they look to be about the same distance. Okay, so maybe that means we can actually use the number one setting in fluorocarbon mode since it is much heavier brake than the other brake profile. So let's see. What happens, we're on the number one setting. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Look at that. So there were a couple of loops that sorted itself out. Hopefully you guys saw that. I'm trying to angle this uh, reel so you guys can see the spool spinning during the middle of the cast. So you can check out the spool control, but we can cast this lure in the number one setting in fluorocarbon mode while we could not do that in the other two line modes. So let's do another cast here. Okay, we had a lot of fluff at the beginning that sorted itself out. Now the distance on that first cast was probably almost reaching the number two setting of the others. So yeah, if you are, I guess, uh, someone who likes to run heavy braking on your reels, then the fluorocarbon mode is definitely for you. And of course, 
especially if you're using really heavy, wiry, cheap fluoro, then that's definitely probably gonna be the best bet. And I'm someone who tends to do that a lot, so. All right, one more cast. See if I can get this lure to come off the rod just right. Get a good long cast without an overrun. Okay, a little bit of overrun there, but really not much has changed as far as distance. The overrun was not nearly as bad as the others. So yeah, we can actually do the number one brake setting in fluorocarbon mode using monofilament line. Okay, so before we start dropping the lure weights down to like bait finesse level, let's try the wind mode in the fluorocarbon setting just to see how short these casts are. Oh yeah, I can feel that brake kicking in and immediately slowing the spool down right at the beginning of the cast. Okay, one more cast in wind mode. All right, so this is definitely the strongest brake profile available on this reel that is fluorocarbon mode in the wind setting. Okay guys, so now we're gonna test the lower limits of the casting range on the Scorpion DC. And I have a Duo Realis 50 SP. This is a small little jerk bait that weighs 3.3 grams. I got no snap swivel, so it's a legit 3.3 and that's a little bit under one eighth of an ounce. Now, keep in mind, once again, this is a medium powered rod with 10 pound mono. So, so this is definitely not the ideal rod and line setup to be casting a bait finesse lure like this. But like I said, in a pinch, you may have to throw something this small and light just to get a bite. So I'm gonna keep the Scorpion in the fluorocarbon setting because light lures require strong breaks. And let's start off with the wind mode and see what's up. All right, well, the lure went off to the left as to be expected, but hopefully you guys saw that the, the spool was very controlled, not a hint of overrun. I could probably do this one-handed and have better results. Oh yeah. It's actually handling this lure pretty damn good. Of course, you gotta adjust your release point, but the wind mode in the fluorocarbon setting is super, super strong. And we're probably getting a consistent, probably close to 40 feet with this little jerk bait. Okay, let's go to the number four mode. Feels about the same, distance is about the same. You can really, really feel those brakes kick in immediately after you cast. Let's try some overhead. All right, so overhead, sidearm on number four, the distance looks to be about the same. probably close to 40 feet. So let's go down to the number three mode and we're gonna try to reach the limit. All right, so that was a nice, easy overhead cast. Let's try to get some distance now. Okay, we're probably getting just a few feet farther. That was a two-handed cast. Let's go one-handed. So that's doable guys. That is probably approaching 50 feet. And the spool is just perfectly composed. I don't think I would have to stop it when the lure hits the water. Oh, yes I do. 
But yeah, but during the cast, there was actually zero overrun or fluffing casting this sub 1 8 ounce lure. So that's pretty impressive so far, especially given the weight of the spool and the fact that they increased the line capacity. How did this get so bad? Okay, so let's go to number two, and this should probably be the limit right here. Actually, no, it's casting it with no problem. Surprising, are we on number two? Yeah, we're on number two. Okay, wow. So I did a two-handed overhead cast, and we're hitting probably 20 yards easy and you probably couldn't see, but there's only maybe one or two small loops on the spool. All right, we'll do one more. All right, that didn't go as far. That was my fault. Okay, one more. Ooh. Yeah, and I had a backlash, that was my fault, but during the cast, no over end at all. That's pretty amazing. It's almost like these brakes are sensing that this lure is very, very light. I would fully expect this thing to explode in the number two brake setting. Okay, so you know what that means. It means we're going to the number one brake setting because like I said, we're gonna find the limits of this reel. Oh shit. All right, that was my fault. Didn't expect the lure to hit the water so fast. So I had a backlash, but I'm ready this time. Oh shit, okay. Okay, definitely a hard cast in the number one setting with this lot of lure is a no-go. And I'm hoping I can pick this out. Okay guys, so off camera, just for fun and just for my curiosity, I switched the line mode to braid and tried to see how low I could go on the brake settings. And let me show you what this reel can do. Now, the lowest I could go is number four. But in the number four mode, I could sling this Duo Realis 3.3 gram Spearhead Ryuki, probably at least 60 feet and not have any issue with the spool at all. It's literally almost a thumb free cast. Only thing you need to do is stop it with your thumb once the lure hits the water. But other than that, in the middle of the cast, it is pretty much worry-free. And as you can see, the distance is way more than acceptable for casting this lure for bait finesse purposes. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. Now just think of what this reel can do with some four pound line, probably not even filled all the way and a true bait finesse rod. And that might be a video that I might try out. If you guys want to see that, just let me know in the comments because this is not a cheap reel. Holy shit, look at that snake. <laughs> There's a snake creeping up on me. He doesn't look poisonous, but you know, he doesn't look like a cotton mouth. But he just came out of nowhere. Now, there are a lot of snakes around here. So yeah, there we go, guys. The new 2021 Scorpion DC. Like I said, this is not a cheap reel. Probably is gonna cost you right now at least 250 to 280 once they get them back in stock. So at that price, I would expect a reel to do a lot of things well. And so far this reel is doing just that, as you can see. All right, there we go now. The next step, of course, is for all you guys that own the 2017 model that we all love so much and to see if this thing casts any better than that reel. And that's going to be in the next video because I'm waiting on a very specific piece of equipment to come in just so we can get better results on the water doing the cast comparison between those two reels. So be on the lookout for that. All right, guys, thanks a lot.